it was a household name. You may not know it, the Tunnies of Derrickillo and the McGrails of Loughlin are cousins. My great great grandmother was Tunny from Derrickillo, and my father always looked upon the Tunnies as family. At the untimely death, at the age of 19, in 1919, of my uncle Pat, who was in the volunteers, that the Tunney brothers, Patrick and Michael, who took charge of the military funeral from Loch Lone to Oakwall. My uncle Pat had been a volunteer and had worked in a secret forge making spears in the foothills of Kirkpatrick with Tony Hoban, the blacksmith from James Street, whose brother Harry Hoban was the clerk in Westford Church. And when Uncle Pat got seriously ill and died untimely, despite the fact that I had quite been quite familiar with the heroic sacrifices of Patrick Tunney, I never really realized until I read this book the extent of his involvement of my Derek Helio cousin. While most <clears throat> of his involvement has been published in a piecemeal manner, piecemeal manner, through articles and poems, it is only when you get the combined work in this book you begin to bring it all together. The poems and ballads of Patrick Tunney were widely read in my youth in Loch Lone and everywhere else around and in the 40s. We used to recite them and sing them when we were going in the ran. It was always one of Patrick Tunney's songs we sang in the ran. We couldn't sing, of course, but that didn't matter. We, we thought we could. But they were much more than that. At the end of the 19th century, the people whom I was born into were very much in the oral tradition and shared history and cultural customs were recorded and transmitted in the ballads, in the kamali, in the poems, and in the songs. And that's what Patrick Tunney did. He put them into songs, ballads, and kamali. These were published in local papers, the Mayo News particularly, and in annuals such as Old Moore's Almanac, which was read from cover to cover. Its contents were more than dates for fairs, predictions about the weather, and expected football and hurling results. Many readers got to know and appreciate Patrick Tunney through the pages of Old Moore's Almanac. There is much more I could say about this important book, which is strongly recommended to students of recent Irish history. Also, we get insights into and nuances of Irish culture at the time. <coughs> and this should contribute to a better understanding of our own family roots in the west of Ireland and elsewhere. It is good to see that Patrick Tunney's tradition has continued through his family to the second and third generation. I didn't think anybody could excel or exceed Maraid uh, Friel's love for her father and her understanding of her father. But now her grandson, Liam, best witnesses to the desirable quality of being concerned for people and issues beyond the Maryland. That's the thing Martin O'Kine said. He was criticizing Irish farmers. And he said too many of them, their interests were limited to their Maryland. But that wasn't the case with Patrick Tunney. He was concerned about the community. He was a member of the district council.
was a county councillor, and also he was a national patriot. And so was his brother James, who was a senator in Dolier. And his brother Michael were also involved in the War of Independence. <clears throat> Leshin, with that, I have great honour in formally relaunching this book, Tis Aaron I Love Best, and commending it to anybody who was interested in what happened in this country a hundred years ago. You'll read a lot of stuff that will come up, but a lot of it will be commentary. But here's the words of the man who was in jail 12 times, I think, and also <laughs> a very funny, the first raid, he was in his pyjamas when the, the police came to the door to take him away. Yes, so I'm very proud. Leshin tau chilsulakum kumani kumeg il of Vahar and Lower, I was command for Tarifa us, I was Raj Aranabar, I was called Arthur Castillo.